this tutorial, we are going to look at three additional lot sizing algorithms. We will also see how to compare the cost of the various approaches to lot sizing. We've already looked at two approaches to lot sizing, lot per lot and ordering a specific number of items. In a prior tutorial, we used lot sizes of 4,000 and 5,000. Lot for lot and fixed order sizes are far and away the most common approaches to lot sizing. We're going to look at three additional approaches to lot sizing, minimum order size, period order quantity, and economic order quantity. These three approaches to lot sizing, as well as costing out the approaches to lot sizing, are not covered in all textbooks. You may wish to check with your professor before continuing with this tutorial. Since all lot sizing changes is the planned order receipt and planned order release, we will only look at one example for some of these. You should consider pausing the video in the middle of the planning grid to try and finish each problem on your own. Once you're done, you can finish watching the video and spot any mistakes you might have made. With the minimum lot size approach, there is a specific minimum you must order. If the net requirements are below that amount, you order the minimum. If the net requirements are above that amount, you order exactly what you need. In other words, you order lot for lot. In this first example, demand is 1,500 in period 1, 1,600 in period 2, 1,800 in period 3, 1,900 in period 4, 1,200 in period 5, 1,300 in period 6, 1,800 in period 7, 2,000 in period 8. On hand inventory is 3,200 and the lead time is one period. This part of the problem will be the same for all examples in this tutorial. For this first example, we will use a minimum order size of 1,600. The screen shows the problem with the inputs entered into the planning grid. For period 1, inventory is adequate to meet gross requirements. For period 2, inventory is adequate to meet gross requirements. For period 3, net requirements are 1,700. This exceeds the minimum of 1,600, so we plan to receive 1,700. For period 4, net requirements are 1,900. This exceeds the minimum of 1,600, so we plan to receive 1,900. For period 5, net requirements are 1,200. This is less than 1,600, so we plan to receive the minimum of 1,600. For period 6, net requirements are 900. This is less than the 1,600, so we plan to receive the minimum of 1,600. For period 7, net requirements are 1,100. This is less than the 1,600, so we plan to receive the minimum of 1,600. For period 8, net requirements are 1,500. This is less than 1,600, so we plan to receive the minimum of 1,600. With period order quantity, Anytime you place an order, you order a quantity that is adequate to cover the next n periods. If n equals 3, for example, you would order enough to cover the next three periods of gross requirements. We will see how to calculate n later in this tutorial. For now, we will rework example number 1 using a period order quantity of 2. This will be example number 2. The screen shows the problem with the inputs entered in the planning grid. So far, it looks exactly like example number 1. For period number 1, inventory is adequate to meet gross requirements. For period number 2, inventory is adequate to meet gross requirements. For period 3, beginning inventory is only 100, giving net requirements of 1,700, so we must place an order. 1,700 for period 3 plus 1,900 for period 4 equals 3,600, so we plan to receive 3,600. For period 4, inventory is adequate to meet gross requirements. There is no beginning inventory for period 5, so we must place an order. 1,200 plus 1,300 equals 2,500, so we plan to receive 2,500. For period 6, inventory is adequate to meet gross requirements. There is no beginning inventory for period 7, so we must place an order. 1,800 plus 2,000 equals 3,800, so we plan to receive 3,800. For period 8, inventory is adequate to meet gross requirements. We are now going to rework example number 2 using a period order quantity of 3 rather than 2. Since you've seen an example already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use this video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made.
gross requirements are handled from inventory for the first two periods, so this problem looks exactly like example number two for the first two periods. For period three, beginning inventory is only 100, giving net requirements of 1,700, so we must place an order. 1,700 for period three, plus 1,900 for period four, plus 1,200 for period five equals 4,800, so we plan to receive 4,800. Gross requirements for periods four and five are handled through inventory. There's no beginning inventory for period six, so we must place an order. 1,300 plus 1,800 plus 2,000 equals 5,100. So we plan to receive 5,100. Gross requirements for periods seven and eight are then handled through inventory. Back in the Basic Economic Order Quantity, or EOQ, tutorial of the inventory section, we use the formula on the screen to calculate the order size that minimize total stocking cost. Q is the calculated optimal order quantity. D is annual demand. S is the cost of placing one order or setting up one production run. H is the cost of holding one unit in inventory for one year. This formula can be modified to work with MRP. To modify the formula, we make two changes. First, rather than using annual demand, we use the average period demand over the MRP planning grid. That is, we average the gross requirements. Second, rather than using the cost to hold one item in inventory for one year, we use the cost to hold one item in inventory for one period. We are going to rework example number three using EOQ. For EOQ calculations, we must bring in cost. For this example, we will use an order cost of $200 and a holding cost of 10 cents per item per period. The rest of the problem will remain the same. The first thing we need is the average gross requirements. For this example, we just add up the eight values and divide by eight to get 1,638. It is fine to round this to a whole number, although it is not required. Using the EOQ formula, we plug in the average demand of 1,638, the order cost of $200, and the holding cost of 10 cents to get an economic order quantity of 2,559. This value needs to be rounded to a whole number. This EOQ value of 2,559 is the quantity we will order anytime we need to place an order. That is, from this point forward, the problem is simply a lot sizing problem. Since this is a simple lot sizing problem, the solution is not narrated in any detail. However, the resulting planning grid is shown on the screen. We are going to briefly rework example number four using an order cost of $300 and a holding cost of five cents per item per period. The rest of the problem will remain the same. Since you've seen an example already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use this video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. Since gross requirements did not change, the average demand remains 1,638 per period. Using the new order cost of $300 and holding cost of five cents yields an economic order quantity value of 4,433. This changes the lot size from 2,559 to 4,433. Since this is a simple lot sizing problem, the solution is not narrated in any detail. However, the resulting planning grid is shown on the screen using the new lot size. Lot sizing using EOQ is rarely used. When it is used, it is mainly for independent demand items or for raw materials where there is a fairly steady demand. The reason is that EOQ does not work well with variable demand. In fact, you may recall from the inventory tutorial on EOQ that one of its assumptions is stable demand. Period order quantity is actually a variation of EOQ, a fact you will realize once you see the formula. Period order quantity was developed to work well with variable demand. The period order quantity, or POQ, is just the EOQ value divided by the average demand. For the EOQ example number four, we had an economic order quantity of 2,559 and an average period demand of 1,638, yielding a POQ of 1.56. We round this up to two. Note that a POQ value of one is just lot for lot. For this reason, we always round the POQ value up to the next highest integer. Why don't you pause the video and try to find the POQ value for example number five. After you've finished your calculations, you can restart the video and check your work. The only thing that changed in example number five was the EOQ value of 4,433. 
That yields a POQ value of 2.71, which we round up to 3. The last thing we will cover is calculating the total stocking cost for the various lot sizing techniques. Not all textbooks cover this, and many professors skip it when it is covered in the textbook. You should check with your professor before continuing with this tutorial. Before continuing, you might wish to review the basic EOQ tutorial and the discussion of total cost of stocking. The calculations we will be performing here are based on those calculations. Total stocking cost is just the sum of the ordering cost and the inventory holding cost. Purchase price is ignored since that cost is assumed to be the same regardless of how many we purchase. Order cost is just the number of orders times the cost of one order. Inventory holding cost is the number of items in period each period times the cost of holding one item in inventory for one period. We will have more to say about this as we work an example. The screen shows the completed planning grid for the lot for lot approach to this MRP planning grid. Notice the addition of three additional rows to calculate the cost. Recall that order costs are $200 and holding costs are $0.10 cents per item per period. Average inventory is beginning inventory plus ending inventory divided by 2. For period 1, 3,200 plus 1,700 all divided by 2 equals 2,450. That times $0.10 cents gives an inventory holding cost of $245. This approach to calculating inventory holding cost is the best approach, but many textbooks take a shortcut. Recall from the discussion of this enhanced form that textbooks only show one projected on hand. For some it is the beginning inventory and for others it is the ending inventory. Rather than calculating average inventory, most textbooks simply calculate inventory holding cost as the projected on hand times the per unit holding cost. So, a textbook showing a beginning inventory would have 3,200 times 10 cents equals $320 for period 1. A textbook showing ending inventory would have 1,700 times 10 cents equals $170 for period 1. We will continue to show the average inventory approach in this tutorial, but realize you may need to adjust the calculations for the approach used in your textbook. For period 2, average inventory is 900, so inventory holding costs are $90. For period 3, average inventory is 50, so inventory holding costs are $5. Additionally, we place an order and that costs $200. For periods 4 through 8, average inventory is zero, so there is no inventory holding cost. Also note that the ending inventory in period 8 is zero. We will come back to that fact later. We place an order each period, so each period incurs a $200 order cost. Adding all these costs together gives us a total stocking cost of $1,540. What good is this value? In comparing different approaches to lot sizing, this is how we would evaluate each approach. The lot size that minimizes this value would be the one to minimize our cost. The screen shows the completed planning grid for the minimum of 1,600 approach to this MRP planning grid. Notice the one change to the way we worked the problem earlier. In period 8, there is a planned order receipt of 1,500 rather than 1,600. Why is this? The reason is, for the cost comparisons, we want to be making a fair comparison. If we ordered 1,600, there would be an ending inventory and so, with everything else being equal, this approach would have to carry more inventory holding costs than the lot per lot approach. So, to have a fair comparison for all of these, we adjust the last order to force it to have an ending inventory of zero, even when this violates the lot sizing rule. Using this modification, compute the total stocking cost. Since you've seen an example already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use this video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. The minimum of 1,600 lot size has a total stocking cost of $1,700. In order to compare the cost for the various lot sizing approaches covered in this tutorial, we need to compute the total stocking cost for lot size of 4,000, period order quantity of 2, period order quantity of 3, economic order quantity. Why don't you try each of these? Since you've seen several examples already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use this video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. The lot size of 4000 has a total stocking cost of $1,730. The period order quantity of 2 has a total stocking cost of $1,460. The period order quantity of 3 has a total stocking cost of $1,750.
and the economic order quantity lot size has a total stocking cost of $1,767.20. The screen shows a summary of the cost for the various lot sizing approaches. In this case, period order quantity of two is the cheapest, while EOQ is the most expensive. If this video helped you working operations management problems, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel.